right, in this video, this is going to be the mixed review part 14. These problems are similar to numbers 29 through 31 in the mathematics sections quiz of the ATIT study manual. Here's a look at 29. Here's a look at 30 and 31. So let's start off with 29. The number of milligrams Y of a particular medicine in the bloodstream X hours after taking it is shown on the graph to the left. Determine if the following statements are true or false. Letter A, the maximum amount of medicine in the bloodstream is 350 milligrams and occurs two hours after taking the medicine. So on our x-axis, we have hours since the medicine was taken, and then we have the number of milligrams in the bloodstream. Notice the maximum does occur at hour number two, and the number of milligrams is right around 350 milligrams. Therefore, this statement is true. Letter B. There is no medicine in the bloodstream approximately eight hours after taking it. So again, on our x-axis, let's go to eight hours and notice the uh, number of milligrams. If we look over here, that's zero milligrams. So there is no medicine in the bloodstream approximately eight hours after taking it. That statement is true as well. Letter C. There is more medicine in the bloodstream one hour after taking it as compared to four hours after taking it. Well, let's go to one hour, we have right around 200 milligrams, and then four hours we have a little over 200, maybe around 225, somewhere between 200 and 250 milligrams. So reading this question again carefully, or this statement, there is more medicine in the bloodstream one hour after taking it. That is incorrect because there is more medicine in the bloodstream four hours after taking it. It's higher up on this graph, therefore this statement is false. Letter D, the amount of medicine in the bloodstream increases for the first three hours and then decreases until there is no medicine in the bloodstream. So notice for the first two hours, the amount of milligrams in the bloodstream is increasing, it's going up. But then after the two hour mark, the amount or the number of milligrams in the bloodstream decreases. Key thing here is this, first three hours, that is incorrect because it increases for the first two hours. Therefore, this statement is false. Number 30, Carter County School surveyed seniors graduating from the six high schools in the county asking them if they were attending any form of post-secondary education, community college, universities, or what have you. There are a total of 8,134 students that are graduating from high school this year in Carter County. The bar graph below shows the number of students from each high school that will be attending some form of post-secondary education. Find the percentage of the graduates in Carter County that will be furthering their education round to the nearest percent. So what we want to do here, take note that we do have a total of 8,134 students and we're trying to find the percentage of students out of 8,134 students. What percentage of them are going to attend some type of post-secondary education? So a quick way to do this is we can take all these numbers here and just be careful. These are the number of graduates who plan on pursuing post-secondary education. This 1,222, there's actually more students from high school number one that are graduating, but out of those graduating from high school number one, 1,222 of those students plan on pursuing some type of post-secondary education. So let's find the sum of all six of these numbers. So therefore, our total number of students who plan on pursuing post-secondary education is 6,155 students. Now that's going to be out of, and typically the word out of means we divide, out of 8,134. If you've been watching my videos on percentages, a quick way to find a percentage is take the part that you have. These are our parts that we've added up and divide it by a whole. Well, let's take these two numbers and divide it. And again, the whole is the whole number, the total number of students in Carter County. So 6,155 students out of 8,134 is approximately 0.7567. So I'm just gonna uh, round it to four decimal places for right now. So 0.7567. Seven. Now this is a decimal. It says find the percentage. 
So if you've seen the percentage videos I've done, if we move the decimal two places to the right or multiply by 100, you can convert this to a percent. So we have somewhere around 75.67% of the students graduating in Carter County plan on pursuing some form of post-secondary education. But since it says round to the nearest percent, we'll just go ahead and say right around 76% of the students. Notice I'm rounding after I convert to a percent. Do not round here, convert to a percent first, and then this six tells that five to go up. That's how we get the 76%. Number 31, the scatter plot below shows the number of absences in an eight week course for 11 students and their overall average in the class. Does there, and I misspelled that, does there appear to be a relationship between the number of absences and the student's overall average in the course? If so, what type of relationship is it? Well, one would probably think without even looking at a graph, the more absences you have, the lower your average may be. That's not always the case, but if you look here, two students with zero absences, one student had an average a little bit higher than 85, and uh, the other student with zero absences had an average of somewhere just below 95. And then notice as we go along here, you know, once we hit like four absences, these two students had averages somewhere in the 70s. And when we get up to five absences, one student here had an average of a 60. So this is what we call a negative relationship. As one thing goes up, the number of absences, the overall average goes down. That's what a negative relationship is. As one thing goes up, something else goes down. Therefore, we do have a relationship here and it is a negative relationship. And I encourage you to go back and check out where we uh, covered this in the goals and objectives videos where we talked about positive relationships and negative relationships. One thing goes up and something else goes down, that's negative. If both things go up or both things go down, that is a positive relationship. Go check out those goals and objectives videos for more information on that. And there you have it, three more problems. Uh, the mixed review part 14, again, that covers 29 through 31, very similar problems there. We have one more video to cover part 15, and that'll be coming soon. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.